Good evening. Please join me in reciting the diocesan prayer for vocations found on page one of the music supplement. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our diocese with selfless hearts that are willing to serve you by serving your church. Lord Jesus, raise up from our families those called by the Father, courageous and humble men to the priesthood, generous servants to the permanent diaconate, zealous faithful to the consecrated life, holy men and women to the married life, and authentic disciples to the single life. Holy Spirit, help us to live our universal vocation to holiness by listening to the Father's voice and responding with a sacrificial love. Holy Mary, model of vocations, teach us to hear and follow your Son. Holy Mary, Queen of Priests, sanctify our priests and obtain for us many more. Holy Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for our families and intercede for our children. The processional hymn is number 144, Glory in the Cross, number 144.
in the eyes of the Lord. Let us ever glory the cross of Christ, the triumph of God's great love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us now humbly acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are servant of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the suffering servant. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are servant of the servants of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us one day to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people, goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God of Mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you are the Holy One. You alone are the Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, 
it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat it, its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher, and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Before Mass, I was walking up this side aisle with my homily in this folder, and I happened to look at my folder, and I thought, what is that mark on this folder? And then I thought, oh, that was the Kit Kat I had this afternoon. <laughs> I got many of them at the children's Easter egg hunt on Sunday, so this is like the mark of my, my sin there, I think. We often rejoice when old things become new. The dull, dusty, and chipped wooden floor of a dining room are refinished to look amazing. The lackluster, the cold, dark, and dreary family room or den renovated 
to become a warm and comfortable place to relax, to play games, and to maybe just watch TV. An old family recipe for spaghetti sauce or for a once beloved dessert is revived, taken out of that old recipe book, maybe given a new ingredient or two, and becomes all the rave among families and new friends. Sacred images of Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, or the saints in a church once distorted by years of candle soot in a cathedral or any church that are restored by artists who take that brilliant paint and make those paintings look like the day they were once brushed. On Holy Thursday, on the night before his passion and death, Jesus took something that was old and made it new by his power and his presence. He transformed the Jewish Passover we heard about in the first reading that Kelly proclaimed for us in the uh, New Testament Passover, into the New Testament Passover, into his feast of his body, blood, in the Eucharist. We know that the name Eucharist, Eucharistia, means thanksgiving. You see, the Jewish Passover was, in fact, a joint celebration of two ancient thanksgiving celebrations. The descendants of Abel, who were shepherds, used to lead their sheep from winter pastures to summer ones after the sacrificial offering of a lamb to God. They called this celebration the Passover. The farming descendants of Cain, however, held a harvest festival called the Masuth, in which they offered unleavened bread to God as an act of thanksgiving. The Passover feast of the Israelites in Exodus 12, in that first reading we heard, was a harmonious combination of these two ancient feasts of thanksgiving, commanded by the Lord, and celebrated yearly by all the Israelites to give gratitude to God for the miraculous liberation of their ancestors from Egyptian slavery, their exodus from Egypt, and final arrival in the promised land. Remember that it was during this journeying to this promised land, to their home, where Israel was fed with manna in the desert. The Eucharist in the new covenant is the new manna for us. It is bread from heaven. No longer do we say like the Israelites, Manach, what is this garbage? What is this wretched food that the Lord has given us? No longer do we say such a thing. We have been given a precious gift, bread of finest wheat. What would we do without the Eucharist? Who would we be without the Eucharist as a spiritual person or as a church? While it may be possible, I guess, to spiritually survive by means only of the word of God, by means of prayer and the support of the community of believers, without the Eucharist, our soul would be spiritually starving. We would be spiritually emaciated. Without the Eucharist, the church loses her source of unity. We would turn inward on ourselves rather than turn outward to Christ's true presence, the source and summit of our Catholic Christian life. I am convinced that without the bread of life, we would not do all the good God calls us to do, and we would not be able to avoid all the evil that we must avoid. In the sacrament of the Eucharist, Christ truly becomes everything to everybody. Everyone can see him, touch him, taste him, take him, consume him, contemplate him, locate him, and if we desire, we can spend as much time with the Lord as love urges us to spend in adoration in front of the Blessed Sacrament, in a monstrance, or in the tabernacles, in every tabernacle, in every Catholic church throughout the world. Every church, then, is in a sense a garden, a Gethsemane, where we just, like commanded to Peter, James, and John, we just watch and pray with Jesus. Under the appearance of bread and wine, 
Christ's true presence makes us more firm in our faith. It stimulates our hope, especially in eternal life. The sacrament is called the Pledge of Heaven, and it revives and makes more frequent our charity. Jesus, who shared completely our human life, even to the point of suffering and death, went a step further on this most holy Thursday night, and he gives his very self. The foot washing was not part of the Passover ritual. It, too, was something new Jesus added to the Passover night when he gives a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Foot washing was, in Christ's time, a common sign of hospitality upon entering a house. This was the task of a servant. So when Jesus acts as a servant, instead of the master that he truly is, what would normally be considered humiliating becomes a sign of his deep and intimate love. It becomes a lesson for his disciples and for all of us to learn that we are to wash the feet of one another in humble service. It is not a coincidence that he does this on the night he instituted the Eucharist. The Eucharist allows us to better become the servant of all by becoming like Jesus. Does not Augustine say, we are what we eat? Pope Benedict XVI, during his pontificate, once said, whereas food for the body is assimilated in our human organism and contributes to nourishing it, in the Eucharist, it is not we who assimilate it, but it assimilates us in itself so that we become conformed to Jesus Christ, a member of his body, one with him. Pope Benedict really speaks, I think, of the goal of the Christian life. It is union with God. This can and must especially be accomplished in and through our participation in the Holy Eucharist. On this most holy night, when Christ institutes two sacraments, the priesthood and the Eucharist, on this night when he gives us a new commandment to love one another, in this night when he shows us his unconditional love by becoming a servant, and that love that will be unconditional and proven once and for all in a definitive way on the cross, we should each ask ourselves, how can I better strive for intimacy and union with God? How can I become more what I eat? How can I become more whom I adore? Maybe more frequent mass participation, daily mass if possible. Maybe more time in adoration or to agree to a time of adoration at St. Margaret Mary's, in the adoration, perpetual adoration chapel when there's always uh, room for you with Christ, always an hour that can be covered. Maybe adoration time here on First Fridays, or as we begin adoration Thursday mornings in the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. Or maybe go to 40 hours devotion in local parishes. Usually they're Sundays to Tuesday, with the closing Tuesday when priests and deacons join in the liturgy. Maybe attend that closing ceremony on Tuesday evening. Make some short visits into this parish church during the day when it is open, really until around 6 o'clock, 6.30. St. Thomas More, who was beheaded, of course, by King Henry VIII because he would not sign that oath of supremacy that declared Henry VIII really the, the supreme head of the church. In 1535, St. Thomas More's famous saying before he goes to the guillotine, of course, is this, I die the good king's servant but I die God's servant first. St. Thomas More said about this night, Holy Thursday, and I think it is appropriate for every time we receive Holy Communion, Thomas More said this. Now, when we have received our precious Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, let us not then leave him alone as we get involved in so many other things forgetting to look at him anymore. For 
anyone who would serve a guest in such a way would have little sense. Instead, let our most important concerns be focused on him. Let us, by devout prayer, talk to him. By devout meditation, talk with him. He who made us, who redeemed us, whom we have offended, who will judge us, who will either damn or save us, has, because of his great goodness, become our guest. He is personally present with us, and he has done this for no other purpose but to save us. Let us not lose this time, not allow this occasion to slip by, for we can hardly tell whether we will ever get into a church again. Please join in singing number 146, As I Have Done For You, number 146.
must leave you now Only for a moment I must go to my father To make you a home On the day of my return I will come to take you with me to the place I have promised where your joy will have no Please rise. The example of Jesus Christ shows us how to serve others in our deeds and in our prayers. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. That priest be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to serve God's people in holiness, love, and joy. Christ exalt in us. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. That nations throughout the earth renew their commitment to peace and justice. Exalt in us, Kyrie, Kyrie, That all people who participate in these sacred mysteries will embrace the new commandment and always strive to love one another. Christ, exalt in us, Kyrie, Kyrie, That those who seek the Easter sacraments during these holiest of days embrace the cost of discipleship. Christ, exalt in us, that all who are nourished at this Eucharistic feast remember the hungry and the homeless. Christ, exalt in us. Kyrie, Kyrie. Of the souls of George and Barbara Cutcabbage, 
for whom this Mass is offered. Christ exalt in us. Kyrie, Kyrie. Creator God, source of the bread and wine we offer, hear and grant the prayers we bring to you, though spoken and unspoken, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The oil of the sick. This oil made from the olive and blessed by our bishop this past Monday is used to anoint the infirm of body, mind, or spirit, and those who are advanced in age in the sacrament of anointing of the sick. For St. James commands, are there any among you who are sick? Let them send for the priest of the church, and let the priest anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. May the sick who are anointed with this oil experience the compassion of Jesus Christ, and by his saving love, may they have strength to bear suffering and resist evil and obtain forgiveness of their sins. Thank you, Rick. The oil of catechumens. This oil made from the olive and also blessed by our bishop is used to prepare those who are to receive the sacrament of baptism, the first sacrament, which makes us adopted sons and daughters of God the Most High. By the oil of the catechumens, the elect of the baptismal exorcism is extended before they go to the font of life to be reborn. Adults preparing for baptism are strengthened to renounce sin and the devil. Infants who are baptized also receive this oil on their chest as a sign that they will be made strong in Christ through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit dwelling within them. Through anointing with this oil, may the church's catechumens who are preparing to receive the saving waters of holy baptism be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms. And may infants at their baptism be given strength to overcome evil in their adult lives. The Holy Chrism, this precious and fragrant oil made from the olive and consecrated by our bishop, is used in the baptism of children and in the sacrament of confirmation that completes baptismal grace. It is also used in the ordination of priests and the consecration of bishops and in the dedication of a new altar. Chrism takes its name from Christ, the Anointed One, of whom we are all followers. Through anointing with this perfume chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit, who, as St. Paul says, intercedes for us with groanings and teaches us all to pray.
please join in singing hymn number 356, Ubi Caritas, number 356. from all of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, plenis uncelli et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants who are living, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for then we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Mysterium Fidei. 
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation, be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace, especially those for whom we now pray. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And to us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them, and you bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso ed in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate spiritu sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula, seculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace take care. Peace be with you. We tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis, ah. 
magnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. The communion hymn is on page seven of the music supplement, Let Thy Blood in Mercy Poured, page seven of the supplement. Thank you. 
Please remain seated for a moment before the closing prayer and the procession with the Blessed Sacrament to the altar of repose. I just want to say a special word of, of gratitude, a special word of thanks to all of the liturgical ministers and um, all those who are very close to the Eucharist and, and help with being um, really servants, uh, Eucharistic servants in this uh, parish church and, and serving our parish in a uh, very profound and very frequent Eucharistic way. First and foremost, uh, as an ordinary minister of the sacrament is, uh, is deacon. So I just want to say thank you, deacon, for uh, really your selfless service to our parish, especially at the altar in, uh, in which you are the uh, minister of the precious blood. And uh, thank you for uh, being present at so many masses, so many uh, Eucharistic assemblies, uh, especially almost every weekend, except on his weekend off. Uh, he is not here, and uh, he deserves a weekend off. Uh, once a month, so I allow that for now. Uh, I allow his, his weekend off a month, but uh, really, seriously, Deacon, thank you so much for uh, all you do for us in, in a Eucharistic way. Thank you for uh, all the extraordinary ministers of, of Holy Communion that serve, distribute Holy uh, Communion, sacred host or precious blood here at Mass. And uh, thank you to uh, some of those individuals who also, or um, sometimes there's some individuals who just go and bring Holy Communion to the sick and to our, our shut-ins, our homebound. And uh, what a beautiful thing that is uh, for them, uh, and also for us who go and bring our Lord to them. I always say, if you can't, if you can't come to the Lord here at the church, the Lord's going to come to you, and, and certainly he does. And I know our sick appreciate that great gift. The Code of Canon Law says the Eucharist is the most august gift that the church has, and uh, for Christ to come into the home or into the hospital where they are, or nursing home, I know it's a blessing to them. So... Uh, thank you to all you ministers who serve here in the church and take Holy Communion to, uh, to our homebound and our hospitals and other institutions. And also, lastly, to all the servers uh, who, uh, who assist at the, uh, at the Eucharistic Assembly, at the Mass, altar servers, uh, youth servers and adult servers, uh, as well as um, sacristans who prepare for the celebration of the, of the Eucharist. So thank you to all uh, from my heart and on behalf of the entire parish community of St. Matthew's, Thank you for your Eucharistic service. We will, yeah, sure. we will have now the procession with the Blessed Sacrament to the altar of repose. The liturgical ministers will uh, process and um, we'll have just a little time of, of adoration. We'll just ask that um, you do not leave until the ministers have departed the altar of repose. And when you do exit the church this evening, if you could do so in silence, you can talk uh, in the, very quietly in the narthex if you have to, or outside under the port of Kashir, you can uh, talk out there, but want to maintain a silence uh, as uh, the Lord is present with us in the, uh, in the altar 
of repose. Thank you also to our apostles, our 12, who had their foot washed tonight. Uh, thank you for participating in that, that very, very special way and volunteering for uh, being a part in this Eucharistic liturgy on this most sacred Holy Thursday night. Please kneel. The hymn for the procession of the Blessed Sacrament can be found on page 11 of the supplement. <laughs> 